In today's video I have three essential tips for painting clouds in watercolour. So I've got a scrap of paper here and my first tip is to give you a better alternative to blotting out your clouds with paper towel like this because what a lot of beginners learn to do is something like this to blot out clouds. There are multiple problems with this. It can look realistic in places, but it can also give uh, quite an unnatural look. You can end up with a pattern that's on here getting on your paper. You also find that with a staining color like this, and I'm using phthalo blue here, it may not all lift off the paper, so you don't get any areas left that are just pure white. The other problem is because you are actually altering the water levels, in other words, you've got a damp area and then a drier area, what can happen then is you can end up with little back runs and hard edges in places where you didn't want them. Now, to be clear, there are certain cloud formations that have hard edges. They're a lot harder to paint, so we're going to concentrate on soft edge clouds in this tutorial. I've got a much better way for you to do this. So what we're going to do this time is going to pre-wet the whole area where you have your sky and we're going to put water on it, clean water. I'm using a flat brush here because it will apply the water quickly and evenly. It's almost like spreading wallpaper paste actually. You're just going to spread across and what you're aiming for is a surface that's nicely soaked but doesn't have any puddles so it's not uneven. And then the second you've done that you're going to go in with your blue and you'll notice that I'm not going to use paint that's too wet here. So I'm just going to come in like this. Now actually there is a bit of puddling going on here and that's because this paper isn't stretched so it's bending a little bit so the water is running down. Any areas where I don't have control on there's too much water I'm going to dry my brush and I can lift those out. And adjust. You don't want to work on this for too long and the idea is that you end up with soft edged clouds like this one with some pure white in the middle ready to work on later and put some cloud shadow on. If you are enjoying this video can I ask you to do me a quick favor can you please click that like button that thumbs up button if you like share subscribe or leave me a comment here on YouTube all of these things are free it will help my channel to grow and I can teach more people like you how to paint and draw so my next tip for you is to mix any cloud shadows or any storm clouds that are in your sky from colors you're already using in your painting let me show you how that's possible now the first thing to understand about mixing a gray and it would be some form of gray is that it's majority blue pigment so you're going to use whichever blue you've used in your sky and then you're going to add tiny touches of the other two primaries that would be a yellow and a red or more likely a pink pink will work better because it's cooler than something like a scarlet red but this can be done with any color palette what this is going to do is ensure that your sky is all made from the same color palette that you're using in the rest of your painting so everything looks harmonious so I've got my palette here of 10 colors and these are uh, colors from my essential set you can see I've used a few of them up I need to squeeze some more out here's the phthalo that I was using so let's mix from that first of all ignore the pink in the center that's just staining so we start with blue because gray is majority blue pigment and then let's add some of this which is some Hansa yellow which is similar to lemon so you see it's gone green now so what we can do is balance it out with some pink I've got here a little bit of permanent rose and you don't need much you see it went green now we add the rose in it's starting to go more towards gray it's kind of a purplish gray now which might be nice for a sky so let's swatch that color I think that's a lovely color really for cloud shadows for storm clouds or cloud shadows we can push this color into any direction so if we want it more sort of purplish we just add a bit more pink and you see this lovely selection of colors we've got here now to prove it can be done from any color palette let's use some different colors I've got some cerulean blue here I squeezed this out because the tube actually split so I'm gonna mix this one directly on the paper so let's put our blue down I'm going to add, this is probably the worst colour to mix a grey from, but nevertheless, let's try it. I'm going to add a bit of yellow ochre. I say that because it's a very warm, mucky, granular colour, but just to prove it can be done from any colours. I've got here some quinacridone magenta. This is a really purplish sort of pink. And let's put some of that in. 
Now it's very pink, so I'm going to add more yellow and also a little bit more of this blue because it's a weak blue. Now look at that. Can you see we start getting those lovely soft greys appearing? Whatever colour palette you're using in your landscape, start with the blue you've used in the sky. Add some yellow and some red or preferably pink that you're using elsewhere in your picture. And you can make a grey that's going to stay within a harmonious colour palette. It's going to make your sky look like it relates to the landscape and isn't just some separate thing where you've just grabbed something like a Payne's grey and painted that on. So my next tip is to apply your shadow colour onto a wet surface. So as I said, I'm not working on stretch paper here and for a proper painting, I always would. It's just because it's a YouTube demonstration. Now we've got these white areas that we can drop shadow in and just, you know, look at how this has gone, even on unstretched paper. You know, it just looks so much more realistic and we've got so much more white space than we have with this one. So I've got my shadow color mixed and I'm going to drop it into these clouds. Now I could wet an individual cloud and certainly on a very complex sky I might consider doing stuff like that however do be aware that just water alone you know if I take water out here can leave a drying line so one of the ways that's a lot easier if you're a beginner is to allow your sky to dry completely the reason you're allowing it to dry is because you're setting that paint into the paper paint has gum arabic and glue in it and binders and that will bind it to the paper so you let it dry and we're going to take clean water over the whole area. Now you might think to yourself, well, everything will just smudge and blur, but actually that rarely happens. This is a staining color anyway, so it won't move too much. And if you've made one or two tiny errors, tiny hard edges, it can actually soften things a little bit. That said, you don't want to be, you know, really being vigorous with your water application. So we're going to go back again to clean water and a flat brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-wet the whole area. Now I'm going to start from the base simply because there's less pigment down the bottom and so I'm in less danger of spreading the paint upwards and if you start to pick up too much blue you can always rinse your brush and get some clean water. So I'm going to come up like this and you'll see this is barely moving at all. Just like with the first layer you're aiming for a nice spread of water without too many puddles and then as soon as that's done so make sure you have everything ready as soon as that's done, we're going to go in and add some cloud shadow. Now, cloud shadow is generally at the base of clouds. If when you add it, it does that, it means it's quite wet. So if you dry your brush, you can lift those areas out. But you may find, as I'm finding here, that it's actually applying quite well. Place it at the base of clouds. You can come up like this. Do you see I've got a little hair there? I'm not going to faff around trying to get that off the paper. It may leave a slight mark that could always be softened later. If you get hairs come off your brush like that or bits of fluff, I think that's just a bit of fluff. What you want to do is just leave that and then pick it off when your painting is dry because you're going to make less mess that way. And continuing to pick up very small amounts of cloud shadow. We're just adding that other dimension here. Your sky may have more shadows than this, may be very stormy. We can also add some down here, close to the horizon. Again, we're getting a much more realistic look than this first way that we had of blotting out clouds. It looks much lighter, it looks much more natural, and our shadow color is harmonious. Thank you so much for watching this three essential tips video. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got free downloadable PDFs with art tips on. I've even got a free watercolour painting mini course that you can take. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.